As you can tell from the thumbnail of this video, this is getting to be too much. I'm going to explain to you towards the end of this video what I mean by that and why it's getting to be too much for us. So we've been doing a lot of work on this mobile home since it's been moved here. And if you haven't seen that video of the mobile home moving company moving this mobile home to our property, I'll put a link up here so you can check that out. I don't think you're gonna wanna miss that. It was a good one. So I'm gonna start off here by giving you a quick tour of what we've done so far since it's been brought here. So if you remember when we first did the preparation for the mobile home to be moved, I did a video tour of what it looked like at that point. And that's exactly what it looked like when it first got here. And I'll show you what we're doing now and what we've been up to. So this is that back room, which we, at the time, were calling Emma's bedroom. This is the first room we are planning on getting finished so we can hopefully start moving in and living down here. So we started off with removing the carpeting. This whole living room and the bedrooms were all carpeted. We tore up all the carpeting and carpet pad and what was left behind is a bunch of staples sticking out of the floor. So that we still have to remove those staples before we can do anything with the flooring. We then moved on to removing all the drywall. We haven't removed all of it yet, but we've got most of it torn out at this point. So we started down here and moved our way across. This wall here is pretty rough. Uh, there's framing members that are all completely rotted out. Same with the subflooring. Some of the joists are pretty soft. You can see I have it covered up here with plastic for now just to keep the cold air out and potentially keep some of the animals out. We went through here using a sawzall, went through and cut up and down and started tearing the drywall out. So if you are renovating a mobile home yourself and you need to tear drywall out of a mobile home. Some mobile homes I don't think are like this one, but I think it depends on who made it and when it was made. But it seems to me that the walls had the drywall installed and I think even possibly glued or something to the studs before they assembled it. Because as you can see the paper, a lot of the paper is still stuck to the wall studs. So if you're going to go through and you're going to take out all of the drywall and you go ahead and you cut up and down and all you do is remove the sections of the drywall in between the studs, doing that a little bit at a time, taking the drywall off of the studs later is going to be a real problem. I ended up using a sawzall going up each stud and having to cut it off and scrape it out after the fact which was a real pain. What I found was a lot easier was to try to get in and behind the drywall, if you can, pry it a little bit. Um, if you pull on it enough and you run a razor or a knife up behind the drywall along the stud, if you can get part of it pulled off, you can actually kind of carefully wiggle it and you'll find, I'll do this section here to show you. But it comes off a lot better that way. And then tear that off. So another thing, if you're using a saw to go through and cut your drywall out, you want to be careful of wires, especially if they're live. In this case, they're not. This mobile home is not connected to anything, so there's no electricity running in it right now. I was going through with the Sawzall initially, like I said, and cutting the drywall out. When I was doing that, I was just going straight in the wall and cutting, and I was hitting wires as I was going. And when I started pulling the wire out and realizing the wire is actually in pretty decent shape, this mobile home is only 30 years old, and just like any 30-year-old house, the wiring is actually not in bad condition. Um, it's very pliable, it's not brittle, and uh, I had the electrician look at it when he was here giving us a quote on getting the building hooked up, and he said, I wouldn't be pulling that wire out, I would be careful with it and leave it, and save yourself potentially hundreds or thousands of dollars having to rewire it. He even said that the electrical box is in great shape, and sees no reason why we should replace that. He said it's all up to code and there'll be no issues with inspections. The only issue we have is that this panel box, the cover for it is missing. And so he's working on trying to find a replacement for that. Like I said, when you're taking out drywall, just be careful of the wiring, especially if you're planning on keeping it. If you're not, it really doesn't matter. So I mentioned before subflooring, as you can see, I had to tear out some of the subflooring. I'm not gonna peel that plastic back, but I'll show you in the other room. This window had an air conditioner in it and it leaked into the, the wall and you can see that it rotted out the subflooring and uh, a little bit of the bottom plate there. This one isn't so bad but the other window over here was a lot worse. This whole 
frame underneath the window pretty much was all completely gone and you can even see the the sill of the window is just completely rotten you can see bug holes and everything your bugs were getting in it so we tore up the subflooring here the joists in here and the bottom plate of this wall is going to have to be replaced it's not going to really be that big a deal turns out it's three quarter inch it's some kind of particle board not even really osb but i picked up some three quarter inch osb subflooring to replace these sections this is the kitchen area where all the cabinets and stove and all that were you can see here we tore out that subflooring and again this was all rotten the bottom plate on this side is actually pretty well intact so there's no issues with that in this section here it's just going to be the subflooring our choices for insulation the insulation that's here you can see it looks pretty clean and it's not in bad shape it's still fluffy it's not all matted down and it's not all chewed up by animals there are some sections where it wasn't pretty and you could tell an animal had been in there so we did take some of it out and also sections where the wall was completely rotten and there was any sort of mold or anything like that i'm going to take all that out of there just because that was all rotten just in case that insulation is contaminated in any way we are going to pull that out and replace it but for the most part especially here we'll give you a good view of what it looks like but you can see overall that insulation looks like it's in really good shape and so why go spending hundreds of dollars potentially thousands of dollars in all new insulation for the whole house when the insulation that is here is going to be sufficient so we did buy rock wool to put in behind the wood stove and we chose that of course because it's fire resistant and we're keeping the insulation you can see all this black tar paper in tennessee we're in zone 4a which means you need to use a semi-permeable vapor barrier tar paper roofing under layment is semi-permeable there's different ratings for it. If you go to the EPA's website, you can see all of that and explains why you would use one thing over another. But after doing some research, luckily we found out we can pick up a $50 roll of tar paper and it will save us hundreds of dollars in all new insulation. And when it comes to flooring, for now we're going to get area rugs and we're just gonna put them down over the floor as we remove all the staples out of the floor. Planning on doing uh, wood on the ceilings, walls and floors. I haven't determined what that's going to look like quite yet. If we want to do tongue and groove shiplap, if we want to just do like a, a board wall. And if you guys have any ideas or thoughts on how we could put all this back together using wood, preferably just because it's a source of material that we don't have to pay for because we have logs in a sawmill. Any of those ideas that you guys have would be welcomed. I would definitely consider any ideas you have because we're open to any of it. But we were thinking with everything being finished in wood, it would give it that cabin feel. Stacy and I have talked a long time about building ourselves a nice cabin in the woods, a rustic small home. And I think we can do that with this. If we do finish this all in wood, I think it'll look really cool, especially having the wood stove in here. I think it'll be kind of cozy. I apologize for not doing videos on installing all these things and the process of doing that. I just figured it would be easier to go over it with you um, as we go in between, because we are in a bit of a hurry to get out of our camper, just because the cost of heat is getting to be too much. And that's what I was talking about in the beginning of this video. It, that's just getting to be way too much. Heating a uh, not so well insulated camper with propane with the cost of propane right now is just to getting to be a lot and we're not even really in the coldest part of the winter yet. So uh, we still have some things that we need to do in order to do that. Now that we're starting to build things back and things are getting put back together, I'm gonna start doing a little bit more detailed videos for you so you can see the process a little bit more. So we have a lot of cool ideas, a lot of fun ideas coming up that um, we're looking forward to sharing with you and uh, hope you're Hope you're gonna follow along with us because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And if you have a mobile home that you're working on or potentially thinking about, please put a comment down in the comment section below. I'd like to hear about what your projects are or what you're thinking about potentially doing. And if you have any questions, put them down in there below. I'm no professional, but all I can do is share with you the process I'm going through and so far, I don't regret it. Like I said, if you're gonna be considering doing a project like this, I'd love to know about it. I'd like to hear about your progress as well. If you're wondering how this house got here and you'd like to see how that is done. Also check out this video where the mobile home was moved to this property. It's a pretty interesting video. The moving company did it and they did an excellent job 
They use some pretty cool technology that you don't want to miss. Check it out. I hope I've inspired you to do something yourself to become more practically independent, maybe even in your own mobile home. Stay tuned for some more cool videos, guys, and we'll see you on the next one.